Hi everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our online class on biology. Can you let me know in the messenger if you can all hear me okay? Is the messenger working? Everyone let me know in the messenger if you can hear me. Yeah, well, yeah, done. well done. Perfect. Okay, so I hope you've all got a pen and paper and welcome. So today's lesson is on cells. We're going to be looking obviously at the difference between plants and animal cells, but then we'll be looking at the five kingdoms, how you can tell the difference between them all, what an autotroph is, what a heterotroph is. So we'll be getting quite detailed and I'll also be setting quite a few tasks throughout. So if you've been part of previous online classes, you know what to expect. So let's just start by saying that all organisms are made out of cells. I'm now going to switch to the iPad. And then because there were some issues yesterday with the audio, just let me know if you can't hear. Okay, are we ready? So yeah, all organisms are composed of units called cells and unicellular organisms, uni meaning one, contain only one cell, whereas many more organisms, which are far more complex than that, we call these multicellular organisms because they contain multi, meaning many cells. Now these cells are often specialized which means that they carry out lots of different functions. However, for many cells, the functions are broadly the same, and that's really what we're going to talk about now when we look at the generic structure of both animal and plant cells. So I'm just gonna show you my simple way of drawing an animal cell. You're trying to draw a fried egg effectively. Can I see the messenger? Yeah, I'm just trying to do that. So here's our fried egg. And notice that the yolk of our egg is known as the nucleus. Then the key thing to notice with animal cells is that they don't have a cell wall, they have a cell membrane. Please. please be aware of this, only a cell membrane surrounding the cell. Then the body of the cell, is it okay? Was it Sharon? Yeah, it was, but I was making sure. Yeah, it's happy very much. Okay. okay, so we have the cell membrane which surrounds the cell. And then we have the nucleus, which forms the egg yolk of the cell. Obviously this isn't an egg, but as I said, it looks like a fried egg. Then the jelly of the cell is known as the cytoplasm. Plasm meaning jelly-like substance, cyto meaning relating to the cell. And then it's just a matter of remembering various other structures. It doesn't really matter how you draw them. Here is a mitochondria. And then dependent on whichever diagram you're looking at, you also have the ribosomes. But that is your generic simple structure of the cell. Let me know in the messenger if you think I've forgotten anything. Obviously, if we were doing A-level, there'd be a lot more structures, but this is your generic cell structure. We're now going to talk through the various roles. I can't see the left. Okay. So what are we going to say for the various functions? So the nucleus is the brain of the cell, but in an exam you're going to have to say that it controls the activities of the cell. And it contains the DNA, which is the genetic material for the cell. 
Next up, the cell membrane, because it's the surround of the cell, you can imagine that it's going to control the entry and exit of substances. The cytoplasm forms the main bulk of the cell, so you can imagine that that's where chemical reactions take place. And then getting slightly more complicated now with the ribosome, we're going to say that this is the site of protein manufacture. And if you're feeling fancy, you can say that protein synthesis. Synthesis is just a nice way of saying made. So protein synthesis occurs here. And then lastly, the mitochondria. This is for a totally different video but we do need to complete our list of functions. So the mitochondria is the site of respiration. And if you guys have studied biology extensively, you'll know that this is where energy is released because after all, each cell needs energy in order to help make the cell function. And so the mitochondria is the site of respiration. Okay, let me know when you're ready for me to move on to the plant cell structure. Don't worry, we, we won't rush. And welcome back to everyone who I, I'm starting to recognize people's names. So thank you for people that are coming to multiple classes. My pleasure, Tariq. Okay, so moving on to the plant cell. Okay, whereas before we had that fried egg structure, fried egg structure, you want a rectangular structure now, broadly rectangular, as you know, I'm not an artist, but this is the sort of diagram you want to draw for your plant cell. So notice we have a double layer surrounding, and then we have a rectangle in the middle. We're going to draw our nucleus again. Here's our mitochondria. Let's pop some ribosomes in. And then crucially, these green structures, which are responsible for making leaves look green. So now we're ready to do some labeling. And the way you want to do this is just remember everything you learned from the animal cell, but just add a few extra additions. So the sort of this layer inside here, notice that this is now the cell membrane. What else is similar to an animal cell? Well, we have the nucleus. We have the cytoplasm. We have ribosomes. And we have mitochondria. Okay, but what do we have in addition? Let's highlight that in purple. These green things are chloroplasts. What else do we have? We have this central pocket known as the vacuole. And then finally, the outer coating is known as the cell wall. So those three things in purple, those are the major differences between the plant and animal cell. So if you're asked in an exam, the main differences is that the plant cell has the cell wall, has the chloroplast, it has the vacuole. So all the functions remain the same from the animal to the plant cell. So what is the role of the nucleus? It controls the activities of the cell. What is the role of the cell membrane? It controls the entry and exit of substances. However, we now need to make some additional notes on what the cell wall does. This protects and supports the cell. Remember that plant cells, plants don't have bones. So they have to do this by having strong cell walls. And the other thing to be aware of is that cell wall is made out of a specific sugar known as cellulose. Next up to the chloroplasts, they carry out 
the number one plant process, which is photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is super important because it's the way in which plants make glucose. So plants are incredibly clever how they harness energy from the sun and they can make glucose using it. Now, this mean, now this is, might be a new word for you guys. This makes plants autotrophs. Now an autotroph is something which makes its own food. And that tends to be by photosynthesis. So that's why plants are so incredible because they make their own food. Whereas animals like ourselves, we are heterotrophs because we are not as good. Instead, we have to eat other organisms, whether that's plants or animals. We don't just sit in the sun and make our own food. We might get tanned, but we don't make our own food. So, did someone ask about peptidoglycan? Yeah, that's answered that. Okay. Perfect. So notice these two fairly complex words, the autotroph and the heterotroph. Plants are autotrophs. They make their own food. Finally, let's label the vacuole. Not too much to say there. We just say it contains the cell sap. But it is important you guys can draw these diagrams out of the top of your head. You're not going to get marks for how beautiful they are but you do need to be able to label everything very nicely, making sure you've got all that level of detail that I've described. And here we have um, a proper diagram showing the same thing, but I wanted to draw it out for you guys, just so you could actually see how I build up my diagram. And I don't think I've missed anything, so that's good. Here we can see some micrographs. So you can actually see that the cells we've drawn are similar to how they exist in real life. We have the animal cell above, and then the green for the plant cells. Okay, it's now time for you guys to have a go. So activity one and two, get your piece of paper out please and have a go answering these. Okay, let's start going through the answers. So, which part of the cell controls the cell's activities? It is the nucleus. Which part of an animal forms a thin layer around the outside? It is the cell membrane. What part is a liquid found inside animal cells? It's the cytoplasm. Number four, is a green structure found inside plant cells? It's the chloroplast. And finally, is a sack of liquid found inside plant cells, that is the vacuole. 
Okay, next up we're deciding what's true or false. Almost all cells have a nucleus. I'm happy for you to have either said true or false here. If you're talking about animal and plant cells, then yes, it's true. If we were including bacterial cells, I don't know what your knowledge is, pre-existing or not, then you would have said false because they don't have a distinct nucleus, which is something. Jelly-like and sack of liquid means the same thing. Right. Do all plant cells contain chloroplasts? This is kind of a trick question. The answer here is false. The reason it's false is because plant cells, which are found under the soil, so for example, the root hair cells, they don't contain chloroplasts because there's absolutely no point in them containing chloroplasts because they can't trap sunlight energy because they're in the dark. Three, the cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell. That's true. Animal cells have cell membranes, true. Animal cells have cell walls, absolutely not. That's false. All cells contain some cytoplasm, that's true. Okay, for this task, I suggest you take a photo and then just use your finger on Snapchat or something to link it. I said for the first one, it's either true or false. It depends if you're including bacterial cells. Okay, let's go through the answers. So plant and animal cells have many features in common and that's because they need to perform the same functions. There are some differences between animal and plant cells and that's because they need to perform different functions. Plant cells have a cell wall in order to give shape and support to the plant. Both plant and animal cells have a cell membrane and that's in order to control what goes in and out of the cell. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts that's because they are unable to photosynthesize and nearly every type of cell has a nucleus and that's because it contains the instructions that control what the cell does. Did everyone get activity one, two and three right? Yay, very good everyone, well done. Okay, moving on. So the five kingdoms, this is a way of classifying all living organisms because we know there are billions of different species, so we need to be able to categorize them. So what are the five kingdoms? Well, that is, as you might expect, the animals, so the animalia, plants, which we call plantae, fungi, protoctus or protus or protozoa, they all have lots of different names, and the bacteria. So we've looked at the animals and plant cells, and now we're going to take a closer look at the fungi, the protoctus, and the bacteria. The only thing I want to add here is the difference between the words prokaryote and eukaryote. This is just a way of describing cells in terms of what their nucleus is like. In eukaryotes, they have a distinct nucleus. Whereas in prokaryotes, they don't have a distinct nucleus. That's all these words really mean. So really, a prokaryote, we're really talking about bacteria. I'm going to talk about that a bit more. Whereas pretty much everything else fits into being a eukaryote. 
So those are the major differences. So now let's have a look at these various other kingdoms in greater detail. So here is our bacterial cell. You'll notice that there are quite a few similarities. We have a cell wall, which someone has already mentioned is often made out of peptide dog lichen. It's not very common that you guys need to know that for your exam boards, but it is often. A distinct nucleus is one that is surrounded by a double membrane. We notice now the huge difference of the bacterial cell is that it doesn't have a distinct nucleus. Notice we have no nucleus labeled here. Instead, we simply have a circular chromosome known as a nucleoid. So that is, oops, that is the key difference here in the bacterial cell. It has no distinct nucleus. And you'll find that it simply exists as a chromosome or a nucleoid. You also have other parts of the bacterial cell which contain genetic material, which are known as plasmids. We have the cell surface membrane. We have cytoplasm. They often have an outer layer known as a slime coat or capsule. And then lastly, the flagellum is this tail structure which helps to move the bacterial cell. You'll often see it in a slide. They can actually move themselves along and that's due to the flagellum. So have a look and you do need to practice yourselves probably during this out, labeling it, making sure you have everything. And like I said, bacterial cells are prokaryotic. Now we're just gonna add a few extra details. Are they multicellular or unicellular? Well, they are made up of one cell, so they are unicellular. Let's, lay, let's list some examples now. So if you're interested in making yogurt, then you'd add lactobacillus to your milk in order to turn it into yogurt because it's that addition of this bacterium that turns the milk into yogurt. If we're looking at something which causes pneumonia, then you'd be looking at pneumococcus. So they've got some pretty cool names. Tuberculosis is caused by a bacterium as well. Yeah, they do come in lots of different shapes, but this is your generic structure. Did they put that? Oh, that's my pleasure, Zara. Okay, moving on then. This is a fungi. And really, I would say, if you're trying to learn um, the structure of fungus, I would literally learn it as almost like being like a plant cell and then just make it round. Why? Because look, we have the cell wall. We have the cell surface membrane, we have a cytoplasm, we have a vacuole, we have a nucleus. Don't include the chloroplast, please. The only other thing I'd really like to point out is chitin. This is what the cell wall is made up of in a fungi. Remember we had cellulose when we were talking about plant cells. The other thing I'd really like to point out here is that how fungi store their carbohydrate is known as glycogen. And it's the same for animal cells as well. So that glycogen is found in both animal and fungi cells, whereas starch is how carbohydrate is stored in plants. 
just something worth being aware of. So yeah, as I said, there is glycogen found within the fungi. Now looking at some examples, you've got the obvious ones such as mushrooms and muco. They're either unicellular or multicellular. And then the last thing I want to really point out is that they carry out saprotrophic nutrition. They are saprotrophs. If you think about mushrooms and how they actually produce food, they don't photosynthesize and they don't go around eating stuff like we do with our teeth. Instead, what they do is they excrete, sorry, they secrete enzymes. extracellularly. So that means they secrete enzymes outside of their fungal bodies and then these enzymes digest dead leaves because that's why you find mushrooms in forest floors and then they absorb those digested products. So as you can see they're quite unusual because they are saprotrophs, they are not autotrophs, they are not heterotrophs, they are saprotrophs. My pleasure, Ruth. Thanks for your lovely message. Okay, we're ready, ready for me to move on now. Don't forget if you've missed anything, then we'll be uploading this online class to YouTube. It says extracellularly, that means that these enzymes are secreted outside of the fungal body. Okay, um, I don't actually have a picture of the protoctists or protists. I don't know why they have lots of different names. And that's because they're quite hard to quantify. The reason for this is we call them the dust bin kingdom. So effectively, everything that doesn't fit into being like an animal cell, plant cell, fungal cell, Effectively, we're like, we don't know how to classify them. So they tend to be put in the protoctus. And so you find that some protoctus are quite animal-like and have animal structures. And that includes amoeba, which is like a little, it's a little single cell organism, which just swims around. Also the plasmodium. Now plasmodium is horrible because it's what infects mosquitoes and that when they bite you, that's what gives you malaria. It's not the mosquito, it's actually the plasmodium that it transports is what causes malaria. We also have some plant-like protoctus, and that includes Corella. Some of them are unicellular, some of them are multicellular. So like I said, it's quite hard to quantify them. I think we're making great progress, we've done loads.
It's up to you if you want to draw them. Can you close that? Right, next up, the viruses. So notice that this wasn't one of the five kingdoms. Why? Because we consider viruses to be non-living. They tend to hijack other living organisms' cellular machinery in order to basically get that cell to do their own work. And that's why they're so dangerous because it's really hard to attack them because they hide, some of them hide within our cells and it's really hard to locate them. But in terms of their simple structure, honestly, this is all I would do if I was sitting the exam. I'd say it has a protein coat which surrounds either DNA or RNA. Totally depends on what the individual virus. One thing to notice is that they are always harmful. There's never been a nice virus. So some examples, obviously coronavirus. We also have HIV, which stands for human immunodeficiency virus. Influenza, we've got here. Tobacco mosaic virus, we have there. The cold virus. Measles, mumps and rubella. The list goes on but they have a very simple structure. They're non-living, they're always harmful, and they don't form part of the five kingdoms. And now I'm looking forward to sending you guys some questions because this will really prove how, um, test how much you've learned. So let me know when you're ready for those questions. Okay, question one. Make sure you write it down. Don't, don't ruin it for everyone by putting it in the group chat. Okay, so going through question one, which of the following is not a characteristic of plants? So not a characteristic of plants. Cells contain chloroplasts. Well, we know that they do. The cell wall is made out of cellulose. Yes, it is. It's made up, it's a multicellular organism. Yes, it contains many cells. D, it stores carbohydrate as glycogen. No, I taught you that it stores it as starch, which is why D is the correct answer. Let me know if you got that right. Okay, have a go at question. Pardon? Now it's time to have a go at questions two to five. I might have to cut you off actually because we're running out of time.
don't ruin it. Whoever's just written that, can you delete your thing, please? Okay, sorry if this is a bit rushed for some people, but our meeting time is almost up according to Zoom. So, two, fungi carry out saprotrophic nutrition. What is the meaning of this term? So, A, extracellular digestion of dead organic matter. Yes, luckily that is the answer right there, so we don't need to go through any of the other options. Below are three groups of organisms. Which of these organisms is prokaryote? prokaryotic so remember it has no distinct nucleus so the answer here is b because remember we just have a nucleoid or a circular strand of dna so the answer is b which of the following diseases is not caused by a virus i told you that influenza measles and hiv which is responsible for aids is caused by a virus. Malaria, remember, is caused by Protoctus. So that's why C is the answer. And then lastly, name the kingdom to which of the following organisms belongs. The mushroom, a fungi, Corella was a Protoctus. Moss is an example of a plant. And Lactobacillus is a bacterial cell. How did you guys get on with that? Cool, well done everyone. So that is the end of this lesson. Did you guys find it helpful? <laughs> no, yeast is a fungi, so it has a nucleus. Great, right, we're going to sign off now. Keep an eye on Insta, and remember we're going to upload this online classroom to YouTube later. So everyone have a great day and I'll see you soon.